So far in our investigation of Taylor series, we've seen that if we want to approximate a particular function f of x by a power series, then we have a formula for the coefficients cn. That is to say, if we want to write it as the sum of cn's times x minus a, where a here represents the center of our series and we're imagining it has some radius of convergence r, then the coefficients are going to be given by the formula cn is equal to the nth derivative of our function, plugged in the value of a, plugging in the center, and then all divided out by n factorial. And in particular, we saw in the previous video what the Taylor series was for the function e to the x. I'm also going to note just a bit of terminology. If we're going to refer to a Taylor series centered at x equal to 0, then that is referred to as a Maclaurin series. So a Taylor series is sort of the, the general version for all values of a, all different centers. If we specifically center it at a is equal to 0, then it's going to be a Maclaurin series. Now, I'm going to go and list for you a bunch of the sort of canonical Taylor series. Remember, we've got e to the x, we've got cosine of x, we've got sine over x, and we've got the, the geometric series that we saw, you know, very first in our introduction to series, 1 over 1 minus x. So these sort of four canonical ones. And it's really a good idea just to become really familiar and to basically memorize these formulas. Of course, if you wanted to, you could derive all of these different formulas by taking the various derivatives, plugging in the x equal to 0, and then dividing out by the n factorial, but here we have these quoted. So the main point of this video is how we can use these canonical Taylor series to come up with a Taylor series for other functions. So for example, take this. I have x cubed e to the power of 2x. And, and one of the things that we know right off the bat is that e to the x is one of our standard forms. So I can come here and write this as the sum from 0 up to infinity of x over n divided by n factorial. But x is just sort of like a place over here, placeholder here. It could be y, it could be a pi. Yeah, this is stupid. But the x in this formula is just a placeholder. We could replace it with anything. So in particular, let's replace it with the value of 2x. In that case, the series that we're going to get is a sum from 0 up to infinity of 2x to the power of n, all divided by, by n factorial. And if we want to do a little bit of algebra, we could on this. We could say this is the sum of 2 to the n, x to the n, all divided out by n factorial. And then finally what we have is that, that corresponds to the e to the 2x part, but I've also got this x cubed portion. So if I want to write out what x cubed e to the 2x is going to be, then I'm just going to come along here and I'm going to multiply everything by x cubed. So in other words, the 2 to the n remains, the n factorial remains, but now the x to the n becomes x to the n plus 3 as I add 3 copies of x to it. So this is very nice that we're able to do this because it, it takes a series that would be a real pain to do by the definition. If you think about x cubed times e to the 2x, if you want to start taking its derivatives, well, there are a product of things. You're going to have to use a product rule. And so you're going to have this sort of continual mess of messier and messier and messier product rules as you take more and more derivatives. It's going to be a real pain to be able to do this. But as long as we remain inside of our radius of convergence, we're able to take our standard uh, Taylor series that we know and sort of modulate what we're given until it looks like one of the things that we know how to do. And you get expressions like this, which is essentially just a bunch of algebra on one of our canonical examples.